At the start of the 21st century, China didn't have any high-speed trains. Back then, traveling across the country meant slow, often uncomfortable journeys. A trip like the one from Shanghai to Beijing felt like a marathon, with trains crawling along at low speeds, making travel long and exhausting. Fast forward to today, and the story couldn't be more different. China now has the largest high-speed rail network in the world, over 42,000 kilometers of track. And it's not stopping there. By 2035, the network is expected to double to 70,000 kilometers. So how did China pull this off? How did it go from having no high-speed rail to becoming the global leader, even helping other countries build their own networks? That's exactly what we're going to explore in this video. We'll break down China's incredible transformation into a high-speed rail superpower. But before we dive in, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to show your support. The Power of Technological Transfer and Partnerships in the early 2000s, China didn't have the skills to build high-speed trains on its own. Instead of starting from scratch, they decided to learn from the experts, countries like Japan, Germany, France, and Canada. China made a deal. Share your train technology with us, and we'll give you access to our huge market. One of the first partnerships was with Japan's Kawasaki Heavy Industries, the company behind the famous Shinkansen bullet trains. In 2004, China acquired the technology for Japan's Shinkansen E2, which could reach 250 kilometers per hour. But China didn't just want to buy trains. They wanted to learn how to build them. Kawasaki's designs became the base for China's CRH2 trains, the first step toward creating their own network. China also worked with Germany's Siemens, bringing in their Velaro technology, which reached 300 kilometers per hour. France's Alstom provided tech for the CRH-5 trains, and Canada's Bombardier added components from their Zafiro trains. China wasn't just shopping for trains. They were learning how to make them. As part of the deal, foreign companies had to train Chinese engineers and share their blueprints, allowing Chinese manufacturers like CSR Sifang to eventually produce and improve the trains. By 2010, China wasn't just copying. They were creating their own models. For example, the CRH-380A, based on Japanese tech, but upgraded to reach 380 km per hour, became one of the fastest trains in the world. In just a few years, China had gone from a beginner to a leader in high-speed rail, using smart partnerships and learning to dominate the industry. The economies of scale and cost efficiency Building an extensive high-speed rail network in a short time isn't just about having advanced technology. It takes smart planning, strategic execution, and keeping costs in check. China's success in pulling this off comes down to their ability to scale up. By working on such a massive scale, China was able to cut costs, speed up production, and get projects done faster than most other countries could imagine. When China first started its high-speed rail journey, building it wasn't cheap. Early estimates were about $20 million per kilometer of track, which might seem expensive. But compared to similar projects in places like Europe or Japan, it was still pretty reasonable. However, China wasn't just looking to build a few lines. They wanted to create the largest HSR network in the world, and to do that, they had to ramp up production big time. By massively increasing production, China took advantage of economies of scale, the idea that the more you produce, the cheaper it becomes. As they built more, the cost per kilometer started to drop. Eventually, it fell to around $17 to $19 million per kilometer, much lower than what Japan or France were paying, which could be as high as $25 to $39 million per kilometer. Cutting costs without compromising quality was key to China's success. A big part of their cost-saving strategy was localizing production. In the beginning, China relied on foreign suppliers for key technology and materials, but they quickly shifted to making these things domestically. 
By producing materials like steel, concrete, and electronics locally, China avoided costly imports and transportation expenses. This shift also sped up construction since they didn't have to wait for materials from abroad. One of the most significant factors in this was the rise of CRRC Corporation, now the world's largest manufacturer of high-speed trains. CRRC doesn't just build the trains, they produce everything, from the train bodies to the advanced control systems and electronics that make the trains run smoothly. This level of self-sufficiency allowed China to save even more money by not having to pay top dollar for foreign parts. By controlling every step of production, China was able to make the whole process more efficient. This approach also applied to building the rail lines. Chinese construction companies were trained to handle everything from tracks to tunnels and bridges, meaning the entire project was managed by local teams. This not only saved money, but also sped up the work, making the process faster and more reliable. In the end, China's ability to scale up production, localize manufacturing, and streamline operations helped them build the world's largest high-speed rail network faster and at a fraction of the cost compared to other countries. An unmatched workforce and expertise. China's rapid progress in building its high-speed rail network is largely thanks to its focus on developing a highly skilled workforce. Sure, importing cutting-edge technology from countries like Japan and Germany was a smart move, but China knew that to truly take control of their high-speed rail system, they needed to build their own expertise. When China struck early deals with companies like Kawasaki, Siemens, and Alstom, they didn't just want to buy trains, they wanted to learn how to make them. These agreements included a crucial condition. The foreign companies had to train Chinese engineers and share their know-how. This hands-on learning was essential. Chinese engineers didn't just watch, they worked directly with foreign experts learning all about designing, building, and maintaining high-speed trains. Thousands of Chinese engineers even traveled to Japan and Germany to get first-hand experience with companies like Kawasaki and Siemens. Meanwhile, foreign engineers came to China to work closely with local teams and pass on their knowledge. But China didn't stop at just copying foreign designs. They took what they learned and improved upon it. A great example is the CRH-380A train. Originally based on Japanese Shinkansen technology, Chinese engineers pushed the design further, reaching speeds of 380 km per hour, making it one of the fastest trains globally. This wasn't just a one-time success. It showed that China had not only mastered the technology, but was also innovating on its own. Another key to China's success was localizing production. Instead of relying on imports, Chinese companies like CSR Sifang and CNR, which later became CRRC Corporation, started making almost everything themselves, from train bodies to complex control systems. This shift saved money and allowed local engineers and workers to hone their skills and take full control of the production process. As China's high-speed rail network grew, each new project gave engineers and workers more opportunities to refine their expertise. By around 2015, China wasn't just learning quickly. It had become a leader in high-speed rail technology. Engineers who once learned from foreign experts were now driving innovation, creating faster, cheaper, and more efficient trains. China had developed such a deep level of expertise that it no longer needed outside help and was even exporting its technology and trains to countries like Indonesia, Turkey, and Kenya. And that's how China became a powerhouse in high-speed rail. What do you think of our breakdown? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more content.